Hello, beautiful people, and welcome. Uh, this is video part two for your pretest for modules 16 and 17, I think, or modules 15, 16. It's the modules on logarithms. I believe it is 15 and 16. I, I could be wrong on that, but it's all things logarithms. And uh, just a disclaimer, if you hear a loud bell, I apologize. We are on campus. Also, if the intercom goes off, we are on campus. I apologize. And lastly, if I make a mistake, I am human. So just let me know where the mistake occurs. So that way we can both learn from my mistake. All right, we are number 19 and we're going to just jump right in. So number 19 says solve each equation round to the nearest 10 thousands. Now, a lot of you guys don't read to what decimal place. Please read to what decimal place it's asking. Um, I'm going to start off by putting 15 to the power of 7 minus 9x in a bubble, okay? The reason I'm doing that is because this is a bubble. You cannot break apart the bubble unless you use a logger, excuse me, unless you use a property. In this case, we're going to be using logarithm, but you have to use either a property or a definition of some sort in order to be able to solve these, okay? So the first thing you need to do is just put it in a bubble so that way you understand that you cannot break these two apart. Now, after you put it in a bubble, you need to make sure that anything outside of the bubble gets taken care of. For example, I have plus two that is outside the bubble. So I'm going to take care of that. So now I have 15 to the 7 minus 9x is equal to 48. Then I'm going to use the definition of a logarithm. For example, log base 15 of 48 is equal to 7 minus 9x. Okay. And again, there is a way to use the properties on this. So if you prefer to use properties, definitely use that. I prefer to use the definition. After this, since I don't know what log base 15 of 48 is, I'm going to use the change of base formula because that is something my calculator can do. So I'm going to change log base 15 of 48 to log base 48 divided by log base 15. And this is the formula you need to know for the change of base. Let me just write it down. So change of base. And that is log of A divided by log of B. A is, in this case, 48. B is your base, which is going to be 15. And that's equal to 7 minus 9x. That's where I'm going to use my calculator. So in my calculator, actually, even before I'm going to use my calculator, let me go ahead and write this, kind of continue solving it. So that way, when I put it in my calculator, I can have it exact form. So I am going to subtract 7 both sides. So I'm going to, I'm thinking negative 7. I'm going to add negative 7, which is the same thing. And then, so here I'm going to have log base 48 divided by log base 15 minus 7. And that's equal to negative 9x. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 9. So x is equal to all of this. But then I have a calculator so I can approximate that. It's asking us to round. It's not asking for an exact answer. So in my calculator, I'm typing in. Uh, what am I typing in? I am typing in log of 48 divided by log of 15. I am pressing enter. I'm then subtracting 7. And then I'm going to divide by negative 9. And so that gives me, uh, for x being approximating 0 0.6189, it's asking for nearest 10,000, so 100, hundreds place, thousands place, 10,000s place, right? So just make sure that you have that. And then so tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, tens. I think I called this hundreds place. That was my mistake. Tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands place. So this should be your answer for number 19. 
Okay, number 20 is asking you to solve each equation. So this is we're using properties. So for example, I see that I have log base 18 and log base 18. You should know that if we have a log base B and a log base B, and there's nothing else outside the bubble. So like here's a bubble. This whole thing is a bubble. This whole thing is a bubble. There's nothing else there. You have two logs being equal to each other. We are using the one-to-one -one property, which states that our A values are also equal. So I have 5A plus 8 is equal to negative 4A plus 3. And again, our basis must be the same in order for this to work. So now we're back in integrated math 1. I'm going to solve for my variable by adding 4As together. So then I have 9A plus 8 is equal to 3. I'm going to subtract 8 both sides. 3 minus 8, real quick, that's 5, excuse me, negative 5 divided by 9, divided by 9. So A is equal to negative 5 ninths. Don't give me a decimal, leave it as a fraction. That should be a negative. You can't really see that, so I'm going to just change it. All right, let's do it again. Same thing. I see a log base 20 is equal to log base 20. There you go. These two are equal. So I'm going to write it here. I have b squared plus 6 is equal to negative 6b minus 3. Okay, so then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I have b squared plus 6, 7, 8, 9 is equal to negative 6b. Now I'm noticing I have a b squared and I have a b. So in my head I'm thinking we're most likely going to need to factor this. So I'm going to continue writing underneath. So I'm going to add 6b to both sides. So then here I have b squared plus 6b plus 9. And that's equal to 0. And again, that screams, screams out to me that we're going to have to factor. So you can use the diamond method. You can use guess and check for this. I know that I'm going to have b. And then two numbers, when I multiply them, give me 9. But when I add them, give me 6. That is 3. So that means b is equal to negative 3 twice. And then again, don't forget when we're solving these, this is super important to solve. And when solving logarithmic equations, you have to check for extraneous solutions. Okay, super important that you need to check for extraneous solutions. So what that means is you have to take your answer, take your answer and plug it in and make sure it doesn't give you a negative log. Okay, can't take the log, you can't take the log of a negative number. So even though I have negative three here, if I plug it in to B, that is negative 3 squared, which is positive. And then if I take negative 3 and I put it in for this B, I have a negative 6 times a negative 3, which is, again, positive. So I'm okay here. All right, let's do this one here. Number 22, I'm noticing that I have same base with subtraction. So I'm going to combine those. I'm going to condense them. So I'm going to have a log base 5 of 10 divided by x minus 8, and that's equal to 1. And then I have a log base of something is equal to 1. So I'm going to use the definition of a logarithm, which means that it is an exponent, and I'm going to rewrite it. Now, again, you can use a property and take log of both sides, or you can take um, raise everything to the fifth power. Like, There's many different ways of doing this. I choose to do the definition. So what I have is I have a base of 5, my exponent is 1, and that's equal to 10 divided by x minus 8. If you don't recall kind of where anything goes, it's always going to be counterclockwise, and you're going to skip this part. This part goes last. So you have base 5, exponent, equals. Okay, base, exponent, equals. All right, so this is what I have now. I know that 5 to 1 power is just 5. So I have 5, I'm going to multiply x minus 8 both sides, so I can get rid of that. That's equal to 10. So I have 5x minus 40 is equal to 10. Add 40 to both sides. So 5x is equal to 50, therefore x is equal to 10. Number 22. And again, take your number, take your answer, check for extraneous solutions, take your number, or your answer, excuse me, 
plug it in. 10 minus 8 is positive, and that's the only one we have to worry about. Okay, number 23. Number 23 is asking us again to solve. So we're going to solve. I'm noticing that again I have a log base 9 and a log base 9. I'm going to condense these two. So I have a log base 9, 9 of 5x squared divided by 5, and that's equal to 2. Uh, this is 5 times x squared, so I can get rid of those two. You can only do that with multiplication and division. So this is multiplication, this is division. So I have log base 9 of x squared is equal to 2. Again, I'm going to use the definition of a logarithm. I'm going to rewrite this as an exponent. Uh, so then we have base is 9, exponent is 2, and that's equal to x squared. So then we have 81 is equal to x squared. And again, you can you can look here since the exponents are equal. What I mean, you can see that x is going to be 9. But when we take the square root, you know that we have to have a plus or minus. So x is equal to plus or minus 9. Then we have to double check what our solutions are. So for example, I'm taking plus or positive 9. 9 squared is positive, so that's fine. I'm taking my negative 9, plugging negative 9 in here. And so negative 9 squared is still positive. So I have two answers for this one. I have a positive 9 and a negative 9. So don't forget this step. Super duper duper important for you guys to double check that your plus and minus, when you take the square root, that it works. Okay. Moving on to number 24, number 24 is asking for our domain, range, asymptote, and two reference points of each, then sketch the graph. All right, this is something that you have to memorize, okay, you have to memorize. Our asymptote is going to be x equals h. Our first reference point is going to be h plus 1, comma, k. Our second reference point is going to be h plus b, comma, a plus k. If you memorize this, then you're set. Okay. So for this one here, it's going to be a times log base b of a minus h, or in this case, x, excuse me, plus k. So that's our form. Okay. So let's start. h what is it? Always take the opposite of what you see. So example, I see negative 1. So my asymptote here is going to be x equals positive 1. So then I have h plus 1. So h is 1 plus 1. k is 2. So my first reference point is 2 comma 2. My second reference point is h, which is 1, plus b, or my base is 6. And k, which is 2, plus a, I don't have an a out here, that means my a is 1. So then my secondary reference point, I'm writing it down below, sorry, I didn't realize you didn't see it. My second reference point is going to be 7, 3. So step number one is identify your asymptote. Step number two is identify your two reference points. Here's one, here's two. Then sketch, so x is 1, and again, for logarithms, it is a vertical asymptote. To show your asymptote, you have to do a dotted line. Then sketch your two points or plot your two points. So two and two, here's one of them. Seven and three, that's your secondary one. After that, then sketch. You know, with the asymptote, one of the ends of your curve is going to approach that asymptote indefinitely and then one of them is going to go off to infinity all right so two reference points we have asymptote we have next thing we need is our range and domain so range domain range is for your y values domain is for your x values so for as domain let's do that what are all the possible x values? Well, I'm noticing that I can go all the way to infinity on my positive x's, but the smallest x value that I could potentially have is something that's very close to 1, but it's not reaching 1. So I'm going to say x is greater than 1. 
I'm not saying x is greater or equal to 1 because I, it can't actually touch 1. We're getting super duper duper close to 1, but we're not actually touching 1. For the range, it's asking for all the possible y values. I'm noticing that in as y gets bigger, I can go off to infinity. And then as y gets smaller, I'm going down to infinity. So that means I have all real numbers for my range. So I have domain and range. It's not asking me for my end behavior, so I'm going to not do that. Remember, read the directions. Don't do more work than you have to. Let's try number 25. Number 25, again, I'm going off of these. X is equal to H. H is inside the bubble. Think opposite. So I have an asymptote at negative 1, a vertical asymptote at negative 1. Then I have my reference point, H plus 1, comma, K. Second refer po reference point, H plus B, comma, K plus A. So then we have H is negative 1 plus 1, excuse me, and then k is negative 4. Then I have negative 1 plus 2, b is 2, my base is 2. And what do I have here? I have k, which is negative 4, plus a, which is, again, if there's no number out in here, it's just 1. So what are my two reference points? I have negative 1 plus 1, which is 0, and negative 4, that's my first reference point. Second reference point, I have negative 1 plus 2, which is a negative, excuse me, positive 1. Negative 4 plus 1, that's negative 3. After we have our information, so we have our asymptote, we have our first and second reference point, sketch. So x is negative 1, here's negative 1. Asymptote is shown by a dotted line.